Hi, I'm Vince Gaffney. I'm an archaeologist from the University of Birmingham. Uh, I think I've got one of the best careers you could possibly have. We, archaeology is fundamentally a two cultures discipline. It, it brings in everything. It goes all the way from the study of pottery and art, all the way through the hard science. Absolute dating, paleo-environmental studies, um, spatial statistics, computational uh, analysis, it, it, it just about covers everything and it means that you have a, a real concept of how to study um, man and his works. Uh, I've been fortunate in, 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 in doing this work now for oh gosh more than 20 years and it's taken me into areas that I could never possibly have imagined that I've been, been able to study in both in Africa, Europe, America, and the, the breadth of societies that I've been able to look at. Hunter-gatherers, um, complex societies, Rome, Rome and her empire, the Greeks. Uh, I don't think that you could find a discipline that does quite so much. How did I become an archaeologist? Well, you probably might guess from my accent that I'm a Geordie. Well, I'm from the city of Newcastle upon Tyne, or as it was called, Ponsilius, the Roman settlement which um, stood on, 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 uh, on the site 2,000 years ago. And when I went to school in the morning, I walked along Hadrian's Wall. When I got to school, um, I was actually studying above a Roman fort. It was possibly inevitable that I was going to be to be interested in history and ultimately archaeology. Um, it, was, it surrounded me from my very earliest um, memories and, and, and I've always loved it. People ask me what's the strangest thing that's ever happened to me. Well, it's, yeah, I've worked in quite a few strange places and quite a few strange times as well. Um, I've worked in a few areas where there's been active conflict and I can absolutely assure you that the, 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 the one of the most interesting positions that, or events that ever happened to me was to be at a party um, in a hill village in a country in Europe and for someone to pull out a Russian hand grenade and to pull the pin out. Um, that's, a period, that's an event that makes you think about your position in the world and actually preserving it. I actually jumped behind a wall and the person threw it into the next field. Um, he didn't go to have a look at it exploding, I'm glad to say. He dived it behind the wall as well. However, I still have the pain uh, just to remind me of that event. And, um, you know, I'm never going to forget that. What else would I like as an archaeologist? What, what discovery, what, 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 what new knowledge could I, could, could I imagine um, that, that, um, that we, we, we might anticipate would be useful to us in the future? Well, there's, there's many things that we could consider, um, many of them wishful, you know, the, the ultimate remote sensing device to see everything under the soil. Well, I'm not sure that's going to come in the near future. However, the future development of DNA studies. Now, that is an area of interest. Up till now, DNA studies have been very expensive. They've largely been um, linked to understanding the, 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 hu the, the development of, of humans themselves. Well, now that DNA is almost becoming a mass industry, we're getting to the point that we should be able to use archaeological sediments to characterize entire landscapes. And we're on the verge of that. This is something that isn't quite there yet, but it is very, very close to being reality. And when we can do that, perhaps we can be able to recreate landscapes in their entirety, not just the bits that we have at the moment, the people, the plants, the animals, the microorganisms as well. When we do that, we'll have a much better picture of what the past was really like.